obviously want to have a system that not only raises more revenue, which we will need to fund the, uh, the priorities of the School Success Committee, but also trying to uh, aim for strategies that will stabilize our system because we have a tremendously unstable system that that tracks the economy on steroids. And when the economy goes up, it zooms. When the economy goes down, it goes in the tank. I think and we also, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think the other point is that on the state level, our income tax structure is very regressive. So very low income Oregonians, even Oregonians who are eligible for the Oregon Health Plan, which means that they're under 138% of federal poverty level, pay income taxes to the state, which seems sort of counterintuitive. Um, whereas some of the wealthiest Oregonians pay comparatively less so, um, because they have the ability to take advantage of a variety of tax protecting opportunities. So I think we need to make our system more equitable and more stable um, and correct some things that have happened in the past that make us unstable. Going at, after uh, the whole tax system, switching from a regressive to a progressive system, um, sounds like another priority that, you know, on top of the five or six major things you guys are trying to accomplish, is that something that is possible this session? Well, there is well it, it probably is not possible to do the kind of comprehensive reform that we're eventually going to need because a big part of our problem now is the property tax system. It's inequitable. It's, uh, it is regressive as well. Uh, so we, I think you'll expect to see uh, changes in the income tax system, in the in the way businesses are taxed, and so that that will be the focus this time, in, in my opinion. If if I may, you, you hit on property tax, um, and what we really want to do with property taxes is, is equalize it. You can have houses, two houses on the same block that because of Measure 5 and Measure 50 uh, are now way different in how much they're taxed. Even though they're the same value, they were built at, you know, at the same time, but you know, there's all different problems there and inequality. And that's, uh, that's the biggest problem in my mind with property taxes, that inequality. Well, can I just close on this, too? I, I do want to bring it back to the idea that sufficiency adequacy needs to be linked to a particular program. And so I think this legislative session, you're going to see a lot of focus on talking about additional taxes, revenue, to fund critical supports that we see in our education programs. And so I would say, from what I've understood, that's really where we're looking at as takeaway that's right. this session. And that's why the Joint uh, Committee on School Success was formed, is to combine <coughs> these things, the aspirations of our of our education system plus a, a method of funding it. I think Oregonians proved with the success of Measure 101, the overwhelming passage of Measure 101, which passed in two-thirds of our counties. Um, I mean, I have the number exactly right, but close. Um, that when we designate revenue for a very mm -hmm. specific purpose, and therefore there's accountability for it, that they're more likely to support it. And that's reasonable. So as we look at new revenue, we want to be sure that we're doing it for purposes that Oregonians have said over and over are critically important to them, such as education, health care, the core services that government should be providing. Getting specific on revenue uh, raising for the Oregon Health Plan, we uh, will be addressing a hospital assessment right now. We're ad addressing, we do a hospital assessment at 5.3 percent and that's going to be raised to 6 percent. Um, we have the health insurance premium tax at 2 percent um, and then of course we're going to uh, um, propose subsidized employer assessment for those employers with 50 or more uh, employees that um, do not meet the threshold health care contribution on behalf of their employees who are actually users of the Oregon Health Plan, so they will be assessed, and then finally the tobacco tax. And so those are four areas. We are going to have a, over an $800 million shortfall in, um, with less money coming in from the feds and with the uncertainty at the federal level, and so we want to make sure that we are able to have our um, 
expanded Medicaid population still intact, so we are looking at stabilizing that revenue source. Uh, sorry, I'm just on that number real fast. I thought it was 630 was the hole you're trying to fill. 800 million? 800 million. Some of it's going to be back to the general fund. But we're talking about that. So that's the, the total number that we're trying to, to get to. Some okay. of that will be addressed with general fund. Some of that will be addressed with the things that Senator Mona Sanderson, the item said. Um, the ones that are locked and loaded are the hospital assessment and the insurance premium tax. So we'll probably move forward with those pretty quickly. We're still working on the details of the other two and how best to approach them. <coughs> mm -hmm. So I wanted to follow up on. Uh,